Christopher Nolan is known to go big, right? He loves practical effects and his latest film Oppenheimer is no exception. But in the midst of all this grandness, they also use a lot of macro to achieve some of the shots we see in the film. It's been a while since I've experimented with macro photography and filmmaking. And so when B-Script sent along their brand new macro lens and handle setup, I thought it would be a great opportunity to experiment with recreating some shots at home using nothing else besides an iPhone. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed and let's get to the experimentation. So taking the three minute long trailer and I pulled out everything that I think could just be macro or at least just one of those insert shots that really shows uh, just like a small element of some sort. And we find ourselves with 13 seconds of all of these different elements. I picked out really three main shots or little scenes that I thought I could recreate here. So let's talk rules. I want to follow Christopher Nolan's thinking as much as possible here with obviously much more limited resources. So his mantra of get as much as you can in camera as possible is what I'm going to live by. And while he says there is no CGI in Oppenheimer, and I believe him, if you look at uh, Ren from Quarter Digital on Twitter had a great thread about how CGI is not VFX. Obviously there was computer things happening in this movie. It was edited with a computer and there were things like compositing together. Those things are not cheating. Just nothing computer generated which you don't have to worry about me cheating because I don't know how to do any of that. <laughs> I loaded up an Amazon cart that basically looks like I did a crafts day for my kids. Got some mineral oil, bunch of glitter, acrylic boxes, this mirror adhesive. Pretty much everything only cost me like 50 or 60 bucks. So let's hope this is enough to compete with Christopher Nolan's budget. So real quick, I wanna give a shout out to another supporter of this video and that is Motion VFX. You guys know that for years I've been using them for my titles and graphics and they actually just had a pretty awesome upgrade to their M installer app that allows you to check out, purchase, update, and do everything inside of the desktop app itself, making it even easier to add new plugins and templates into your library. If you primarily edit your stuff in either DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro, they have an enormous library of plugins and templates that you should check out. A lot of the stuff you've been seeing in here are from their MTuber 2, MDiary, MJourney. All the templates are very customizable, which really allows it to kind of make it your own while also being incredibly fast and easy to use. So if you want to learn more about Motion VFX, definitely check them out in the link in the description as well. Let's get back to the scene recreation. All right, so this first shot that I'm trying to achieve here is the, uh, what I guessed was like a piece of glass or something like falling and dancing on a mirror. So we have our mirror type material here and we got these little circles or like 30 of them in here. What I was worried about is of course the Amazon picture shows them like looking like glass and super clear. And as you can see, they are, uh, not <laughs> very clear at all. All right, so this is kind of the first setup I'm testing out. I've just got a t-shirt hanging in the back so that it looks like kind of the abyss of a black background. I've been testing different ways to drop the, not coin, but you, the whatever disc. And it seems like starting with a spin and then letting it fall naturally gives me literally like a quarter of a second of the motion that I'm going for. But that's all I need, because again, I can just repeat that clip a bunch of times, layer them together. So now it all comes down to lighting because this softbox is too big, it's hitting the back, and it's not giving that like harsh light. So I'm actually gonna test out this brand new Hobo Light Micro that they just sent me. It's not sponsored by them or anything, but it's kind of perfect timing, macro and micro. This is also a fun challenge for me because I don't know if you guys can notice, but uh, we're still waiting on a house to be finished and a new studio space. So we've been basically traveling and being nomads for the past couple months. So I'm in my parents' basement and I only have like a 10th of the amount of gear that I normally have. So this project definitely has me going back to my roots. This is also one of those scenarios that anyone who has done like water droplet photography, just gotta take a bunch of shots and we'll see which one looks the best. But first time to switch out for the micro and let's see what the lighting looks like. So let's kill this key. All right, first let's set manual exposure. Top light definitely isn't gonna work. That's gonna light up that whole disc. That's getting close. I really like kind of the funky flares that it's giving in the background and kind of going off this mirror finish.
So I think we're getting very close to the look, but reviewing the footage, the not so clear disc is really affecting the final image. Um, I also think I need to adjust the shutter because there's basically all motion blur. And when I look back at the clip, if you pause it on each frame, the lines of whatever the edge is, uh, is very sharp. So what I did is I took one of these and I actually wrapped it in the same mirror finish uh, kind of adhesive thing for this and I put it on both sides and I just made it a hair smaller than the actual rim that hopefully this gives kind of more of that white edge and then the center kind of blends into the rest of the reflections and mirrors and we'll see if that gives us a better look. All right, I think we are done with this shot. Time to move on to the next one. So now we're setting up for what I believe is the mineral oil, water, whatever, and glitter shot. I just fill up this acrylic cube. Thankfully, the Amazon description that it was pretty much watertight is accurate. It seems to be holding so far. So now, similar to the last shot, I'm gonna take this Hobolite Micro here and just kind of move it all around and see what angles are best. So all I have on hand right now is this actually broken a uh, little arm that doesn't lock right here, but thankfully I just need it to be like perfectly parallel. So hopefully we can just balance it. Actually, I think I just had an idea. So in the little creator kit for the micro, uh, you get a bunch of these little magnetic filters and I'm gonna try this blue one out since the shot seems to have some blue tones to it. So I think the glitter actually worked out pretty well. It's really hard to mix both the red and the blue to get that sort of depth. So I'm not sure how accurate that's going to be, but the bokeh that it was giving off definitely seemed on par with the shot from the movie. I did have a plan B, which I want to see if is even more accurate by this little thing that I found on Amazon is like a funky nightlight, but it uses fiber cables, which work by literally just putting a little LED on the bottom of this shines through the bottom of the fiber cable and what happens is on the ends of the cable you can see light but you don't really see light throughout the entire cable itself there's a little bit of light leakage here but i want to see what happens when i put this in the water and kind of move it forward and back well uh that did not work at least the kids enjoy it but all in all, I think we got as close as we can for this shot. But now it's time to move on to the final shot, which in my opinion is the most exciting because, well, fire. All right, so we pretty much have the footage. Uh, let's go ahead and just see what we got. We have these, like I said, I don't think these were gonna work. The, the whole coin is just, you see too much of it. So I think we're gonna go with one of the later ones. That was a good spin actually. So we got two little options. Let's head over to our color page. Boost in the contrast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, I like kind of like the dust specks and stuff. I wonder what happens if I just layer this on top and then we change the composite to screen, I guess. Flip this one. I almost want to scale them up. Okay, okay. Things are happening. Cut the clip while it's still going crazy. And then if I just repeated this. All right, you guys tell me. So this is the original from the film. And this is mine. Shot on a phone. Remember, Hollywood cinema camera. Christopher Nolan. Millions of dollars. Michael Tobin. Parents basement. Budget. Five dollars. <laughs> I'm proud of it. I put a lot of work into it. I'm proud of it. All right, let's move on to our our second shot here. I know for a fact this whole red, moving through the red and into the blue ain't gonna look pretty. Yeah, see the problem is when I use the blue top light, there, there's red in here. Like this is all red, but you can't see it. So I had to turn on the regular key light. This is all 4K 60 FPS. So if I take like this shot, for example, post zoomies. It's got like atmosphere to it. Mm -mm. I hate throwing it to this, but yeah, that, that looks the same, right? 
<laughs> Let me try the more subtle shot, which is this guy right here. If I take that, yeah, this is like too dense. I should have sprinkled much less in. I think it was on the right path. What do you guys think? So this shot to, to that movie, mine. <laughs> uh, again, budget $5. All right, and let's jump to the last one here. This one, my intended goal was to get a sparkler, uh, but unfortunately, sparklers are like sold out everywhere. So my wife found a uh, fire starter, flint and steel. Here's every shot where I... It was actually really difficult to get the, the it to spark in the spot that I needed for it to like be in focus. So a lot of it is like out of focus, which is really good base but I couldn't get like in the movie, it's so clear, like this huge fire. This almost looks like Roman candles. You can see the little fireballs like hitting something. Like it's like they shot Roman candles at a wall and that's what it's exploding on. Oh good, just one giant. <laughs> Maybe it's too much, too much. See, and I like that screen, but now what we need to do is somehow make those yellow. So I'm gonna go, Saturation 100. Oh, my gain. Be more yellow. I'm gonna save this as a still. And for all these clips, we're just gonna apply that and we're just gonna see what happens. <laughs> see, I love this one as a base. You know, it's like here, when I stack them, obviously they all happen at once because it's one like single thing that I'm doing. These, you know, a bunch of things are happening. So I think I need to repeat what I like as the base. So I'm gonna have this one kind of repeat. And then I'm just gonna randomize. Looks pretty random uh, to me. Maybe. Okay, that is the realm of what I was hoping for. Pretty happy with this. Check this out. This is the movie, millions of dollar budget. Movie, mine. And if I just repeated this all again, all done with that. All done with that little flint and steel. I am so stoked right now. Yes. So regardless of how close or not close the final results were to the original film, I think this was a really fun experiment. You know, I spent my entire teenage years pretty much doing this because, you know, gear wasn't in abundance back then. And so just playing around with household items and trying to get cool different shots with what you have lying around was what it was all about. And so being able to take the time to go back and kind of do that again was enjoyable. If you think there's a movie or scene recreation I should do next, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys in the next video.